Uh, well, my name is Oswald Beeson. Uh, so tell us about yourself. Tell us the story. Oh, no, well, um, I have been doing fairly well and, and uh, was working. And, well, well I was, I'm, I'm, um, I'm on a fixed income now, but yet and still, you know, I need a place to, to live, and it's the price of, you know, the, the, the rent and all of that is so astronomical, and I'm, I'm in financial straits, and so that's why I'm out here uh, homeless now. So, um, you know, I, from time to time I go to the different shelters, but uh, for so long, and, you know, and, uh, I guess will allow you to come. So that's where you find me today. Uh, yeah, here on beautiful Lake Eola. But I wish I was in, you know, my own place. And that's the main focus that, you know, I'm, you know, looking for. It's really, it's really tragic, I think. But, uh, the city's trying to, to let understand. I'm not familiar with the city anyway, but I think they're trying to do some programs. I think they uh, have a program to place all the homeless veterans, which is a start. And there's just such a need that there's not enough homes stuff for everyone. But I, in the three years I've been doing this, I've seen a lot of people who have been placed in homes. It's a long process, but you know the city's working towards it, and if things just keep, uh, you know, doing more, then I think it'll get, continue to get better. And they certainly are trying to help. My name is Kayla Redley. I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm homeless. I came down from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's nothing down here. Is nothing like Harrisburg. We got nice people. We got night. We got bad people. Yesterday I lost my wallet. Still ain't gave it back. Got it back. But even though I'm homeless, I know God's gonna do something for me. In homeless life, to me, when I see when I used to see people homeless, I thought it was sad. But when I got personally me being homeless, I seen I had hard ways, hard times, and sometimes it's not hard. Sometimes I got good days. Sometimes I don't. Yeah, I do have a break time, break down time for it, because it do get hard for me. But I've been pretty sure I've been getting through it much longer. But it's just, I don't like the ignorance, the meanness, the pestering stuff. Even when we go to dinner, people want to push me out the way. Like they never ate in their like, life. But homeless is very hard for people. And this is one thing I don't wish on none of my enemies or nobody to be homeless. Because at the end of the day, you can lose everything to be homeless. You can get your stuff taken. Don't know when you're going to get it back or if you're ever going to get it back. I love Florida. I just don't like Orlando. And the, I love Orlando, and I mean, don't get it wrong. But I just don't like the ignorance and the president's people. Great to God. Wait. Been blessed by the people feeding us and looking out for us. So they're very good about feeding you here, and making sure that you got your needs as far as food. What they need is blankets, housing, and they most definitely need a tent to be able to keep warm in and survive. Because survival techniques are on the low end here. There is no resources for it. There is no habitat the Aspire building, which incidentally, I painted the mural below it. I own it. Somebody stole my trademark infringements and patent, but I will re-own it and donate it to the city. That's my plan. <laughs> can I prove it? My fingerprints can. Yeah, her all fingerprints are on all those paintings. With that being said, I would hope that more awareness would become of the people that are freezing cold at night, that have no habitat to survive. The only habitat they have is by some stranger coming up and giving them something. Whether a blanket. You ask a homeless person what they want. They want a blanket. They want a pillow. They want a tent. And food. And they want food. But they never ever ask for anything materialistic other than that. They don't ask for money. Although they need money. They don't ask for money. They only ask for the fundamentals to sleep through the night to get to the next day. It becomes an epidemic come the next day if it's raining. If it's raining, there is no resources to habitat or, or house them. If you have a moment in, in the Salvation Army, 
where you can't coexist because they come with rules. You make one mistake, you're out for 30 days. There is no other where to, there's no other resource to go. That becomes an epidemic again, where I watched a woman leave last night because she felt uncomfortable because of her race. Yeah. Because she had nowhere to go. She left at 10 o'clock at night and went out in the freezing cold rather than be the Salvation Army to just keep warm. She'd rather be freezing cold than be treated bad. I watched that last night. So I wind up helping a blind woman who nobody believed was blind and legally blind. I helped her all evening. And most people are ignorant to the fact that there's disabilities out there that they can't see because they're so blind. Well, they're out there and I've been in hospice my whole life helping people. And they should be more people like me helping people like that. Because that's where it's at. That's where they need it. Assistance. When you can see a blind person can't see. There's not rocket scientists. You can see that they can't see. You can see they, they need to live. Just to get to the bathroom. Just to wash their face. That's what I did last night. I helped a blindless woman. As still yesterday, uh, we helped with people who was in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And we, we still did the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes we just, because I've had everything and I've had nothing. So, but we still help people that we can help that we're capable of doing. So, If you can't help people that are in need when you're in dire straits, what is this world coming to? There has to be a happy medium where people can, up there, below my painting down there, can come down to this level, ground level, and see that there's major necess necessary needs. There's not one need, there's many needs. It's not just one problem, there's several. And they can combine into, well, it's a water thing on the water are, are living in a circle and they never kind of find their way they just get by there's nice people on subway they contribute um this company they came out last night they did a um, documentary on the homeless on the news last night they wanted to interview me i refused i'm only doing this interview right now because i'm in a situation due to domestic violence the only reason why i'm homeless because I got beat up and the, the cop decided it was a good idea to pick his side against my bruised body. It didn't, it didn't work for me and that's why I'm homeless. And that's why I'm sitting here right now letting you do this interview. And that is the only reason why I'm letting you do this interview with me. Because no woman deserves to be beat to sacrifice the fact that let a man of power win. That's the end of my story. And I'm not, I'm not that man. So He's not that man. She knows I'm not that man. That was her this husband the before friend me. So. Who helped me. Yeah. I'm just but a good, I'm a good see, friend. I'm making a sign yeah. that says domestic violence made me homeless. Yeah. It's going to be the sign I'm going to make. I'm going to sit on that corner over here and Channel 9 News wants to do an article on me because I'm a famous artist. It doesn't make me famous. It just makes me a good artist. It makes my ex-husband famous for producing my art on the Aspire building. That's my art. I painted it with recycled art. I own the patent, I own the trademark, and I own the copyright. That's me, Teresa Catherine Maine. 